続いてはネットアップシニアテクニカルディレクターアリンダムバナジーからオンタップの技術戦略についてご説明いたしますアリンダムさんよろしくお願いいたします Hello,、uh, this is Arindam, and I'm going to talk about the ONTAP technology platform today and how we are going to drive the next gen innovation、uh, with the ONTAP technology platform.、Uh, the usual disclaimer、uh, that this contains material that is forward looking and uncommitted functionality. And while we are very serious about these items, they are not committed roadmap items yet. So, some of them could change. With that, let's dive deep into the presentation. Today, I'm going to talk about how ONTAP has evolved as a technology platform, and that ONTAP is not AFF or FAS, but that is a deployment variant of ONTAP. ONTAP technology is deployed as appliances, it is deployed as a solution, it is deployed as a Software defined storage, it is also deployed in the cloud. So we have taken ONTAP and deployed it across many form factors, both on prem and in the cloud. So if you look at the innovation dimensions of ONTAP, as you can see below, we have ONTAP deployed in the form of storage arrays, AFF and FAS, deployed as converged platforms like our FlexPod offering, deployed as software defined storage, what we have done with ONTAP Select. And then we have cloud offerings with ONTAP, with cloud volumes ONTAP, as a service offerings, offerings that we have with ANF, and how our microservices offerings with Atom and with Astra are just introduced into the markets. So with ONTAP, we have storage diversity. We can adopt to any new media technology that comes in. We have worked with SAS drives, SATA drives, new SSDs, NVMe SSDs. We're also looking at working with SEMs, storage class memory. So we have a diverse portfolio of storage support. We have unified protocols. We have supported files, we have supported blocks, and now we are also supporting objects in the form of ONTAP S3. We can scale up. We have scaled up our platforms to larger number of core counts and newer memory architectures. We have also scaled out. By the addition of nodes and being able to attract newer workloads that needs the、uh, scaling aspects of scale out technologies. And we have end to end data management capabilities, one of the industry's richest data management capabilities. And then we have caching, tiering, and cloud connectivity to make us be able to be deployed anywhere, both on prem, in the cloud, and build a true hybrid cloud. Story. And that's not all. We have rich ecosystem integration with most of our ecosystem partners, whether it's Oracle, SAP, VMware, Red Hat. We have a diverse ecosystem integration. So we are unmatched as an innovation platform. This gives us the unique opportunity to be able to not only meet existing workloads, but also the demands of new workloads and new applications. And And as our ecosystem partners innovate, we have co innovated along with them to enable an end to end solution for our customers. Now, let's look at what have we provided over 30 years of innovation across. We started in 1992 with the Waffle file system. Ever since, we have added many, many features over 30 years of innovation. We have enriched our portfolio. We are more than 2,500. Patents at this point. So it's really grown over time. That shows that we have a leadership in feature sets that we have supported through 30 years of innovation, not only innovation within ONTAP, but by integrating it with ecosystem partners. Over the last few years, we have also looked at different deployment options. ONTAP Select is a software defined offering. We have also deployed ourselves in every cloud. Every cloud vendor has an offering with ONTAP at this point. You call Amazon FSX, you have、uh, ANF, name one of the big hyperscalers, and ONTAP is deployed in one of the big hyperscalers. And 2021 has been the year of consummate adop adoption of ONTAP and its data services across all major cloud providers. 
So we, we have leadership in different deployment environments, data centers, cores, clouds, we are there everywhere. And we have used our data services to build a true data fabric so that data can reside anywhere and everywhere. And finally, we have the best in class system performance. We have provided 24% CAGR performance improvement over 18 to 20 years now. Many subsystems or systems find it very difficult to support the rich data services, to support the rich features and support performance improvements over time. We have managed all of that. So it's not only features, not only deployments, but performance that is so critical for modern day workloads. So we have the leadership and performance as well. That's been on tap. That's been the evolution of on tap for the last 25, 30 years. For the next section, I will now look at what are our current focus areas and what we are doing uh, towards those focus areas. So let's look at our current roadmap and development focus areas. Precisely, they are aligned to six key business needs. The first is getting new workloads to ONTAP, and that includes getting machine-generated data. The explosion of data, the generation of data, has really grown exponentially in the past several years. And a lot of that in modern-day workloads is machine-generated data. These data sets demand unprecedented performance levels that we have not seen in the past. So we are looking at extremely low latency, mission critical, high IOPS workloads that require massive data scale. If you look at m and &E, media and entertainment, if you look at AIML workloads, they need massive data scale. So that's one of our key business need that we are catering to, these new workloads that demand high, high throughput at low latency at massive data scale. We're also looking at diverse data requirements, not only the performance, but also the location and cost, the deployment flexibility. We call ourselves having a hybrid storage strategy. That is, our hybrid cloud strategy requires us to be deployed in any cloud, being able to do data mobility across the clouds and also across cloud and on-prem. So our hybrid cloud strategy with our data services and our unified protocols allow us that deployment flexibility so that we could be anywhere and everywhere. And our data services allow us to be connected with what we call as the data fabric. We are also cognizant of emergence of newer and more dynamic data centric security threats that impact business continuity. So another area of focus for us is the security and compliance. As you would have seen with the ONTAP November 2021 release, we have bought out a feature called anti-ransomware that, that has machine learning capabilities to detect ransomware attacks and protect your data. So that is top of mind for us, security and compliance. Business continuity also demands that data should be available always and from anywhere. So we are providing integrated data protection capabilities, our DR capabilities, snap mirror, sync and async replication, rapid recovery, on-demand recovery are all the capabilities that we are building in as one of our key focus areas. The modern day demands of newer applications and business continuity also demand we significantly lower time to value of our products with reduced operational and management complexity. So ease of use has been a mantra for us and simplicity. How could we lower the storage management overheads for our systems? And that's been a key focus area for us. We will talk about autonomous ONTAP in the upcoming days. And what that is all about, it's all about automation. It's about new APIs. It's about self-driven operations. It's how the system can operate on its own. So that's, that's one of the key focus areas for us, ease of use, simplicity, and autonomous operations. Finally, data volume explosion increases cost concerns. We are now looking at petabyte scale storage. And uh, the proliferation of data requires that 
petabyte scale storage to be stored at an affordable cost. So another focus area for us driven by business needs is data cost optimization. So we are looking at tiering capabilities of data, tiering data to cheaper, lower cost storage. We are also looking at improving our storage efficiency to be able to store more data or more usable capacity for a given physical capacity. So these are the six business needs that we are currently focusing our on-tap roadmap and development towards. So let's talk about what have we done in this regard for our ONTAP release for November 2021. The November 2021 release, we have released our anti-ransomware feature that I talked about in the last slide. It provides autonomous ransomware protection based on machine learning. The system can learn on its own, can detect ransomware attacks and can protect your data from ransomware attacks. This is an industry leading preemptive detection that enables us to be the leader in data protection. We also released our NVMe over TCP capabilities. And that is critical for high performance enterprise SAN workloads. It, it also establishes the fact that ethernet is going to be ubiquitous in the data centers. And to be able to harness that we have to provide data transfer capability over ethernet medium, a fast data transfer capability over ethernet medium. That is what our NVMe over TCP story is about. We have also enhanced our object storage capabilities. We have expanded data protection for ONTAP S3 with native hybrid clouds backup using NetApp SnapMirror. And then we have simplified storage management by enabling automatic firmware updates for disks, shelves, service processors, BMCs, and more. That's our autonomous ONTAP story. So we don't only are planning, but we are also responding by releasing features that enable these capabilities. That enable us to be a leader in security, speeds and feeds, unified storage, and the simplicity that's critical for hybrid cloud deployments. So that was a quick snapshot over our current focus areas. Uh, and how we want to respond to the business needs and the changing workloads in current times. We also have a vision to look forward and bring together a set of technologies that enable us to harness the demands of data growth and application growth in the upcoming years. So that's a segue into our vision section. Let's look at what we want to do with ONTAP or what is our vision of taking the technology platform to. So our vision is to make ONTAP a future ready data platform. We want to be a data flat platform, not only store data, but manage data, enable customers to have business insights on the data and be the most powerful cloud connected and most efficient all flash solution. So cloud connectivity is first and foremost on our agenda because we do realize that most workloads are going to be cloud connected. Our hybrid cloud story is very, very critical. We want to be flash empowered. The simplicity of flash is very hard not to regard. We want to be software defined. We want to be deployed anywhere and we want to deliver innovation through our software. So that is where our software defined story is very important. We want to be simplified and efficient. Simplicity is going to be key. What cloud computing has taught the entire world is simplicity. And that simplicity is ubiquitous, whether you are deployed in the cloud, whether you're deployed on-prem or any other data centers. And we are laser focused on that. We want to be intelligent and secure. We want to protect customer data from any attack surface. You don't want to lose your data. So we want to protect your data at any cost. And we want to be workload aware. We want to be the platform of choice for new AI ML workloads. Let's double click on some of these and look at what we are doing. Now, some of these are forward looking, as I said, and these are still in planning phases. These do not have commitment to a release yet, but this 
talks about the next four slides talked about talks about some of the innovations that we are planning in ONTAC. Our goal is to be the platform of choice for modern day all flash data centers. We want to provide a cost efficient, energy efficient storage at petabyte scale. Now you might ask, what's new in flash? Flash has been there for 10 years, but we are seeing a trend of workloads shifting to flash that we have never seen in the past. We are seeing capacity centric workloads migrating to flash for performance and management simplicity. Typical examples being AI ML workloads, data lakes, media and entertainment, rendering, EDA. They need high bandwidth, uh, but they also need high capacity storage that is best provided by flash. So both bandwidth and a capacity tier is needed. And that is what flash and some of the new emerging NAND technologies like QLC and PLC would enable some of these workloads to transition to flash. And flash prices will continue to decline. We are seeing a decline at an 8% cadre, but the prediction is decline at much higher rates. And it's not only the flash prices, it is the real estate savings and the power savings that flash provides such that the total cost of ownership of an all flash solution is much, much more attractive today. And that is pushing a lot of the data center investments to be on all flash. So with that trend in mind, what are we trying to do? We are trying to provide a petabyte scale all flash storage with high density enclosures. That is one of our innovation areas. Can we, can we be the best dollar per gig offering? We are looking at super, super capacity commodity flash solutions at a dollar per gig offerings that has been unprecedented in the past. We are also looking at new and advanced data reduction techniques as the workloads have changed, as new images and media uh, storage has come into vogue. Existing data reduction and compression techniques are not going to be holding good for the future. That is where we are looking at newer data reduction techniques. We are looking at uh, compressing data, especially the media and video workloads. What we, there are techniques called as similarity-based hashing that we are looking at. That will give us a boost in data reduction techniques. We are going to look forward to leveraging the efficiencies and simplicity of scale out because scale out gives you a capability that you can add different blocks of capacity or performance as you need. So we could scale out based on if the application needs more performance or the application needs more capacity. We could add blocks of compute tier and capacity tier to our storage. We are also looking at providing an all flash object storage tier. One of, one of the shifts in the industry or the technology trends that we are seeing is Object storage is not only be a cheap and deep storage because of the modern day applications, specifically around AI ML, they are written for object storage because of the simplicity of deployment of object storage. So there is going to come a fast object storage tier for analytics workflows. And that fast object storage tier is what we want on tap to be the object storage of choice. Finally, autonomous operations. I've talked about autonomous on tap in the last couple of slides. We have to be able to have a storage tier that can automatically detect changing workloads, tune the system, update the system, heal the system, like what we call auto healing. We'll, so we are looking at all those capabilities when we call as autonomous operations. It is auto update, auto heal, auto balance, and auto tune itself. So this, these are the capabilities we are looking at to be the leaders and be the platform of choice for modern day all flash data centers. Let's look at the next slide when we talk about object storage and we touched about object storage in the past slide. Why object storage? Because it will grow at a consistent CAGR over the next five years. That is the growing market. That is where new applications are going to move towards. Most new applications love object storage. The AIML workloads, the applications that, that are written for AIML 
a lot of those modern day applications are written for object storage. Object storage allows you to tag metadata to every object. That's critical for AI ML workflows. And the, there has been a ubiquity of applications written for object storage right from edge to core to cloud. That is what we want to harness. We want to be the leader with object storage. So what are the things we are looking at in terms of innovation? We are looking at duality of access for analytics workflows. So you could have, depending upon where you are in the data pipeline, your data could be ingested as files, but when you run your analytics on it, you should be able to provide object access to the same data sets. So you are writing as files, raw files, but you are re reading as objects. That's duality of access. And it could be the other way as well, depending upon your deployment and depending upon how your data pipeline is architected. You could ingest or write as objects. And then you could have a, a GPU rendering farm that's using NFS over RDMA to crunch the data using NFS. So a data written, a data set written in the form of objects are accessed as files for the AIML rendering forms. As I said a couple of minutes back, object storage has advanced API so support. You can have more metadata for object. You can have tags for object. And then you also have APIs like S3 Select that gives you a query interface to query the metadata and gives you capability to provide more business insight, more cataloging capabilities because of the extra metadata that is tagged to every object. So that is very, very important. Those kind of capabilities where you could use it for either filtering, it could be even time series filtering. It could be aggregation based on some object metadata, or it could be even catalog of objects that you have, catalog of different kinds of objects that you have. What are the top 10 kinds of, uh, you know, the top key events? Those, those are the uh, capabilities you could query using these open APIs like S3 Select. I talked about the two-tier object storage architecture a few minutes back, and we are looking at that as well. Now we have both IPs within NetApp. We have ONTAP S3, we have storage grid web scale. We are looking at this two-tier object storage architecture with the fast tier being ONTAP S3 and uh, the capacity tier being storage grid with its geo-distributed scale. And we are trying to look at sharing object namespace across these, these products. And then we are going to leverage our data fabric to make sure uh, we have uh, woven this around the hybrid cloud space, the on-prem and cloud. We want to use our data fabric to be able to make sure that data is available anywhere and everywhere. You could ingest data on-prem, but you could tier it to the cloud or you could bl blast it to the cloud if you want to run some analytics workflows, for example, and you want to leverage the cloud ecosystem for analytics workflows. So we are giving the flexibility of having your data both on-prem and in the cloud. And that is where our data fabric strategy has been very, very crucial for us. We are also trying to intercept the massive transition from virtualized to containerized platforms. Kubernetes native storage is real. We are seeing lots of stateful applications migrating to Kubernetes because Kubernetes as a platform has been very popular, not only in the cloud, but also on-prem. And a lot of workloads, a lot of our customers we are talking to, most of them have Kubernetes deployments today. Most of them are trying to move their applications to Kubernetes. And Kubernetes is not a workload, it's a platform, which more and more people are trying to leverage. And over, over the last 18 months or so, we are actually seeing more stateful applications migrating to Kubernetes than ever. So we want to intercept that massive transition from virtualized to containerized platforms. And we, we want to be front and center of this strategic shift of Kubernetes as a modern data platform. So we have offerings in the cloud, our Astra family of products in the cloud. We have just announced Astra Data Store as well, which is an SDS product, which is 
deployed from the Kubernetes control plane. It is natively integrated with the Kubernetes control plane. And the features of that, now when we started looking at in this class of products, does, does anybody have the same capability as Astro Data Store? We looked at maybe some of them have one or two capabilities, but not all the capabilities that I have lifted on the left-hand side here. We don't need any proprietary client software. We provide shared file services, shared file volumes for all applications. The advantage of that is it allows not only newer applications to take advantage of that and scale out horizontally by accessing the same persistent volume from multiple Kubernetes spots, but it also allows existing applications that were written with shared file architectures in mind to migrate to Kubernetes. We have built Astro Data Store on a scale out uh, platform. So you could start small, you could start with as small as three nodes and you can really scale out. And it is integrated with all of NetApp's proven data management capabilities. It is integrated with NetApp's field hardened resiliency. And over time, we will support both containers and VMs for this product. So this is a very, very strategic outlook from us. This is a very, very strategic product from us that we want to harness this shift to containerized platforms. It is software defined. It is scale out. It is emboldened with NetApp's data management capabilities and it's the, it has the best in class resiliency. So when we started looking out for capabilities, we couldn't find any other product in its class that has all of these capabilities. And in terms of the future, we are looking at extending these beyond standard storage protocols. We do understand for us to be the Kubernetes native storage of choice, we have to uh, really be close to the applications. We really have to be integrated with the applications. And that might require us to provide APIs that are not storage standard APIs, but more of application integration APIs. And we are looking at that very closely. We are looking at all integration capabilities there. Finally, the last slide that I want to talk about is about the, the managed data lake platform that we're looking at. We do realize that modern AI ML workloads and the big data pipelines you need a data lake platform to be able to not only provide storage for that, but being able to allow businesses gain insights from that data. Just having a storage focused view in this world will not help us in the long run. So we have to look at providing additional capabilities. First, we have to be integrating with the big data pipelines so that the data can come to our data lakes. So we'll have to provide value added services to these big data pipelines by integrating and intercepting the data close to where the source is and then optimize and shorten the pipelines. We have to support query APIs. I talked about S3 Select a few slides back. We have to support these kind of APIs for filtering, aggregation, time series sampling, and then provide value added services like cataloging, compliance, security, for forecasting. And some of these capabilities we are not looking to provide all on our own. We are looking at integrating with middleware applications. We are looking at integrating with some of these uh, applications that enable search or sampling, enables us to do discovery of the data schema so that we can provide the services like cataloging. And our goal is to be able to provide a data lake platform that is the one-stop shop for customers for all their analytics workflows, their batch analytics, their real-time analytics. So we are looking at integrating with the very popular messaging and streaming processing software like Kafka and Spark. Spark. Uh, and we are trying to optimize the workflows there. Our, and we are trying to leverage data fabric to extend to the lake house patterns as well. So, as you might know, data lakes are now transitioning to more and more distributed lake house patterns. And this is where we believe that our data fabric is going to be very critical for us, not only be the data platform for data lakes, but the platform for lake houses as well. And why we are doing this? 
because we do understand that AI analytics driven workflows will be omnipresent. It will be there in across every organization, every enterprise, on-prem, cloud, public sector, FinTech. Some of them could put their data on the cloud. Some of them cannot put their data on the cloud because of regulations, but these workflows will be omnipresent. And a lot of these, if you look at IDC data, it is about the worldwide revenues for AI will be about 500 billion by 2024. And the application spend is going to be 50% or more. What that means is the application is going to drive some of the infrastructure, how the new infrastructure shapes us. And that, therefore it is critical for us to integrate with the applications. And that has been our focus area, how to integrate with this AI applications and enable faster business insights and time to market for customers. So these are the major focus areas we're looking at, innovation areas we're looking at to make ONTAP and any of ONTAP derivatives to be the platform of choice for the future, for the new workloads, for the new deployments, and be the best in class with respect to resiliency and cost. I'd be happy to answer more questions whenever we get a chance. Thank you. <laughs>